What's going on, guys? It is your motivation guy. That's right, man, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. You know me. I'm just trying to encourage you guys to be great, not only in this game, but also in life. Yo, like, this is your time, man. This is your season, so go get it. Welcome back to another Pro Guys video today. Fortnite Battle Royale has succeeded more than anybody probably like ever expected it to, especially over the past three years. But that doesn't mean it hasn't had its fair share, you know, of missteps and controversies, right? So in this video today, we're gonna be discussing some of the biggest fails in the history of Fortnite. Now real quick, ladies and gentlemen, we gotta do our question of the day. What do you guys think was Fortnite's biggest fail? I'll let you know my opinion later on in this video. So let us know down below. But before we get into this video, if you're looking to get better at Fortnite, because in this new season, we're all about, you know, looking to improve. The meta is shifting very, very rapidly, and you know, you need to get ahead of the curve, right? So you gotta check out ProGuides.com, where we have pro coaches who can help guide you on your path to greatness by teaching you structure, you know, mental discipline, mechanics, and so much more. What are you waiting for? All right, guys, it's about that time, ladies and gentlemen around the world. It's time to scream this out. It's time to sit back, come on, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that? It's that bunch of crunch. And let's get this going. So when the guided missiles were first added to Fortnite, we probably all knew that it was going to be a terrible idea, right? An explosive weapon that, you know, you can control from a distance seems to just go against everything that Fortnite actually stands for. The game is meant to be, you know, about getting into fights that require you to think quickly with your building and, you know, your shooting so that you don't end up like eliminated, right? And the guided missile removed it all. So when it was added to the game in patch 3.4, it turned out that everyone's fears were pretty much well-founded. It only took a single patch for Epic to nerf the weapon by a huge amount, decreasing the turn rates by 75 and the movement speed by 15%. Even then, it proved to be, you know, way too safe of a weapon for people to use, right? And it was complained about until it was eventually vaulted on April 18th, just over a month after being introduced, by the way. So the guided missile was an awful idea, even if it did give us some pretty cool rocket riding moments, right? When Fortnite Chapter 2 finally released, after days of the game being completely unplayable, everyone was excited. There was a brand new map for us to play on for like the very first time, but things ended up getting stale pretty, pretty fast, right? You know, we were used to Epic Games dropping a new season of the game like every two or three months. But this time, Epic Games made us all wait from October 15th to February 19th, way over the average. But it was even worse than that, guys. Like throughout season X, you know, we had received content updates, you know, on average, right? Once every week. In chapter two, season one, that became a lot less stable and updates could take anywhere from the week we were used to up to almost three weeks. Then on February 5th, we received the last update of the season and got nothing new until chapter two, season two released on February 19th. Hopefully Epic has learned from their mistakes and like how they handle chapter two, season one, because none of us wants to experience another season that just drags on like that again. When Brutes were added to Fortnite in season X, we all lost our mind, remember that? There was a time when Fortnite had no vehicles at all, and then all of a sudden we had this giant mech suit with force fields, rockets, super jump attacks, giant machine guns, and a massive self-destruct that dealt 100 damage to all nearby players. Wow. It was one of the most controversial items ever added to Battle Royale, if not the most controversial. Perhaps, you know, more controversial than all of that was the fact Epic Games were willing to ignore anyone who tried to tell them that the Brute was a bad idea. They didn't care about the pros' opinions and they left them in competitive mode. Eventually, you know, they did make fewer Brute spawn in arena and tournament playlists, but with, you know, hashtag remove the mech trending all over Twitter, at the time, you know, it's easy to say that they didn't do nearly enough in the heat of the controversy. The fact that the Brute was left in the game for the Champion Series, which had a prize pool of $10 million, was really the icing on the cake. Luckily, you know, the pros knew to team up to take down the mechs if they showed up in the games. When siphoning was added to Fortnite, a lot of us thought it was one of the coolest things that ever happened to the game. It gave us all the ability to play much more aggressively than before, right? Health and shields that we lost during a fight being granted back to us if we managed to eliminate our enemy. Epic Games removed it because they said it made the game too aggressive, something that most of the fans didn't agree with at all. 
It was just more complicated than that. You know, Epic removed siphoning from standard playlists because their data said more people were disengaging with the core modes, with players, you know, claiming that they had less of a chance against high skill players who had full health. So the mechanic is still in the arena mode. And it looks like, you know, that's where it's gonna stay. Epic has made a really big effort to make Fortnite more accessible to new players with the addition of mechanics like bots and skill-based matchmaking in Chapter 2, while, you know, relegating like the sharper experience of Siphon and the lower levels of materials to the arena mode. Epic Games has been involved in plenty of controversial lawsuits, you know, since they first released Fortnite Battle Royale. But the biggest controversy of them all was probably the time that they sued a 14-year-old boy for supposedly selling Fortnite cheats. Wow. The boy, who we only know as being called, you know, CBB, had his own YouTube channel where he showed off the hacks and then linked them off to a site where they could be bought. Epic accused the kid of having broken copyright and was seeking damages for his actions. Epic argued that the cheats altered its copyright by creating a new version of the game through the injection of altered code. Is it ethical to sue a kid who might not have really known like what he was getting himself into? I don't know. Well, the mother of the boys certainly didn't agree. She filed a legal note that ripped Epic's lawsuits to shreds and called for it to be thrown out. Her primary points were that her kid hadn't actually developed the cheats, nor had he distributed them. He actually only downloaded them and streamed them himself while also linking off to the site he just got them from. Eventually, the case was settled outside of court, but the story serves to be a dark stain on Epic's credibility to this day. So while the Fortnite World Cup last year was one of the coolest moments in the history of Fortnite, it was also filled with its fair share of controversy as well. So, you know, one of those controversial moments was when the players Damien XXIF, Cook, and Renato Mac managed to qualify in the week eight competition, even though they had previously been handed a suspension for cheating after week three. This is a high chat saying as well. Why is he just mining this instead of going for the gun or something else? Just grabs the ammo, pickaxe the chest. That's a free point for rise, right? They weren't using aimbots or any like type of hacks. Instead, they were colluding with another team during the online open competition. The people XXIF and Renato were colluding with were essentially, you know, feeding kills to them, right? Allowing the team to get more kills than they would have done usually. Videos were posted of players supposedly missing shots on purpose and playing worse than they usually would just to push XXIF to the top. So in week eight, XXIF and Renato didn't cheat at all. They finished in third with 91 total points, which raises a lot of questions about why they felt the need to cheat in the first place. You know, pro players weren't happy with Epic, allowing two players to compete on the New York World Cup stage, claiming that letting cheaters into their biggest tournament wouldn't be a good look for their young audience. If we want to talk about like pro Fortnite players cheating, then I guess we probably have to talk about FaZe Jarvis getting banned last year. He was banned because he was using an aimbot on his secondary account to play in solos on the playground mode. It might not sound like such a big deal, I get it. Solos and playground aren't exactly like the competitive arena playlist, but using cheats is directly against Epic Games company policy. And so he was immediately served a permaban, which also <laughs> stopped him from competing in any professional tournaments or events. The response from the community was mixed. You know, some people thought that banning Jarvis permanently was a bit of a harsh move considering it was only his first offense. Like, I mean, he's still super young. So like, it's such a, I think it's just a stupid kid making a stupid decision. Didn't really fully think about it. It wasn't in a tournament, it wasn't in a cash cup, wasn't in a, anything like that. While others thought that Epic was doing a good job of making an example for anyone else that might decide to try and cheat the game, right? Showing that they really did have a no tolerance policy against hackers. I think he should be banned because it's people like him that ruin the game for me whose time is at a premium when we try to play online. So Jarvis did make an apology video explaining that he knew what he was doing was wrong and then later on made a music video about the whole situation. Did he really learn from his lesson? Uh, I don't know, probably not. So we've already talked about Fortnite suing kids, but what about time celebrities decided to sue Fortnite instead? All right, so look at this. One of the ways Epic makes most of their money from Fortnite is through selling in-game emotes, right? And a lot of those happen to be famous dance moves. The issue is, you know, a lot of celebrities who created those dance moves have sued the company, claiming that they use their dance moves in the game without any consent. 
From actors such as Alfonso Ribeiro, you know, who pioneered the now famous, you know, Carlton dance, to rappers like 2 Milli, for a while, you know, it seemed like mostly all these celebrities who had been referencing Fortnite was gonna say something bad about their inclusion. The strangest of all these cases was when Orange Shirt Kid's mom sued Epic for putting his dance into the game. She claimed that because his dance hadn't won, and because Epic had added it as a reaction to the dance becoming a meme on Reddit, it was actually used without consent or authorization. These days, you know, it just really seems like Epic actually gets permission to just like collaborate with these celebrities who create the dance moves in their game, like the addition of the Rick Rowe emote, instead of just taking moves that don't technically belong to them. So when Epic Games added the Infinity Blade into Fortnite, they probably expected it, you know, that we'd all love it, right? I mean, who wouldn't love a game-changing weapon that gives you the ability to leap major distances and just destroy structures with a single swing? Come on now. Maybe it would have been, you know, fine in normal public modes, but including the item in Fortnite's Winter Royale tournament in 2018, which had a prize pool of $1 million, was probably a bad idea. Players have been like grinding for weeks at this point, right, to try and qualify for the tournament, only to find that two major game-changing patches would be implemented right before the finals. This clip showing a player cutting through structures and enemies alike as the final circle closes in just goes to show why adding the Infinity Blade into one of the game's biggest tournaments at the time was a decision that really lacked judgment. It can't feel good to practice your building and shooting for weeks on end, right? Only to then like get cut down by somebody jumping across the map with a sword that can instantly delete you as if you didn't do anything. All right, so we've spoken a lot about cheating in this video so far, right? Pro players who got other people to feed them kills and a phase member who, you know, used hacks on a secondary account. Neither of those cases can quite match up the time Johnny K, who used to be a part of Team Caliber, got caught attempting to cheat in the Fortnite World Cup. Oh no. With a prize pool of over $40 million, it's understandable that every Fortnite pro would want a piece of the action, right? And to make it that far, you really, really had to be the best of the best. Johnny K was a good player. I mean, he must have been, right? Otherwise, he would have never even been signed onto a pro team. But clearly, he has some doubts about whether he could perform on the world stage biggest place because he was trying to buy cheats from a hacker. The cheats were ESPs, which would have allowed him to see enemy players through walls. So when it all came out, you know, courtesy of the hacker himself and a YouTuber called The Fortnite Guy, Team Caliber immediately dropped him from the roster. After everything went down, Johnny K deleted his social media accounts and it looks like he never ended up returning. Probably a good move when you try to hack your way into the biggest Fortnite tournament to ever happen. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. We're so glad that you watched the video today. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to like, subscribe, and show proguys.com some love for showing you this video. We'll see you next time. Peace.